space guns are like the ultimate form of artillery, being so big they're capable of hitting things that aren't even on the planet. Their sheer aura is why they've become a bit of a staple in sci-fi for defending against space invasions, simply because big guns are cool. But is it actually possible to make them? Yes! That's what we're talking about today, along with some other uses they have, like transportation. Oversized artillery started out as being one of the earliest ways people conceived of to get up into space. Jules Verne famously put such a thing in From the Earth to the Moon in 1865, blasting people from surface to surface in one go. But you're here for using space guns as weapons, and there's good news on that front. While getting to orbit is hard, just reaching up to hit something in space is definitely easier. Your projectile only needs to be going fast enough to intercept its target, rather than also going fast enough sideways to not fall back down again. The bad news is that fast enough does depend on the altitude you're trying to hit, and even for low orbits is still a decent way above what normal guns are capable of. Let's look at Project Harp, a 1960s high altitude research program that shot science payloads up there on the cheap. There were two of these monstrous things built, made out of old battleship gun barrels stuck together with a lot of bracing to support their massive weight. The extra length gained from bolting two barrels together meant that the propellant could push on the projectile for longer to impart more velocity to it. Combine this with a significantly lighter projectile and you get much higher muzzle velocities compared to the massive shells these gun barrels were originally built to fire. One of these things actually holds the record for the highest altitude reached by any projectile fired from a gun at a whopping 180 kilometers, which is above the Kármán line and thus technically in space. But only just. For example, the ISS orbits up at 400 kilometers. Not to mention that the top of the 180 kilometer arc is where the projectile would have been going its slowest. Clearly, we need more velocity, so how about using a much bigger boom? Like, say, a nuclear one, like the Pascal B underground test. This was just a little 0.3 kiloton device down a big long borehole. The previous Pascal A test had been a little more spicy than intended, so they welded a 900 kilo steel lid over the top of the hole. But instead of containing the blast, the steel lid was detached and ejected straight up so fast that a high speed camera only caught it for one single millisecond long frame. Its calculated velocity could have been six times Earth's escape velocity, which is certainly a lot more than the Project Harp gun. This thing would have been up at the ISS's altitude in a mere six seconds. In fact, this accidental launch, wink wink, held the record for fastest man-made object until the Parker Solar Probe took the title. The problem is that going at Mach 192 means the lid was almost certainly vaporized as it underwent extremely entry but in reverse. If you had a projectile that could survive that, and don't mind only being able to aim straight up, then you've got yourself one hell of a space gun. Just like how Space Dogs Patreon has another set of neat wallpapers of our custom spaceships for you to grab. Check out the links below to support us. So, big booms are one fun option. How about something a little more practical, like the light gas gun? These are used for hypervelocity impact testing and things like that, and they use regular chemical propellants and aren't even that complicated. The special source is that the boom pushes on a piston rather than a projectile. That piston compresses hydrogen or helium gas, which in turn gets shoved down into a smaller tube behind the actual projectile. The difference in tube size acts like a force multiplier, shoving the projectile far harder to a higher velocity than if the boom was applied directly. There was actually a company called Quick Launch who plans to use a huge, scaled up version of this tech as a way to yeet satellites up into space. They had the cool idea to submerge their kilometer long gun in the ocean, which meant it could have actually been turned and aimed. Now yes, this isn't a weapon, but just change the payload from a satellite and then it becomes one. Of course, another way of getting a hyper velocity cannon is to use electromagnetic acceleration, so a coil or railgun of some variety. I don't think we've used one of these for this 
this purpose in real life just yet, but there have been ideas out there for them. One of those ideas was Star Tram, which is another crazy space launch system. This thing was meant to use a maglev track that ran up the inside of a really big vacuum tube as a way to get around the nasty atmosphere, slowing down and heating up the projectile. The first generation concept was just going up a whole mountain to get above the densest part of the atmosphere, but the crazy second generation version went all the way up to 22 kilometers. Just like with Quick Launch, this wasn't meant as a weapon, but just swap out the cargo for something spicy and then it is. However, you can't aim it because it's a fixed structure. At least its use as a transportation option is still interesting, and there's a similar thing in Soma, which is also a bit like Quick Launch since it's underwater. Actually, since the gun in Soma and Star Tram are both electromagnetic, you could count them as mass drivers. More on them in a sec, since I can't talk about electromagnetic space guns without bringing up Ace Combat. Here, the space guns were made to target the incoming Ulysses asteroid. Stonehenge was an array of eight massive railguns to blast the incoming rocks, and the even bigger chandelier was more like a mass driver firing missiles for the same purpose. A bit of a different method is harnessing the power of spinning to hurl things using centrifugal force. Spin launch is another one of these satellite launch without a rocket things, but using a vacuum sealed centrifuge to build up velocity before letting it go, just like a discus thrower. There's actually a good amount of potential in using rotational kinetic energy like this up in space for all sorts of things, so that's worthy of its own dedicated video in the future. So as we can see, space guns on Earth have to overcome some challenges. Not everywhere is like Earth though, and space guns are going to get better on celestial bodies with lower gravity and less or no atmosphere. Combine both, like up on the moon, and suddenly space guns and mass drivers become really attractive options. Yes, kinetic weapons in space have range issues, as we've talked about previously, but for transporting cargo around, they're perfect. You can send payloads up to orbit or beyond at almost no cost cost, and can even catch them at their destination with a sort of reverse mass driver, or make a more advanced payload with a rocket engine to finish its own journey by itself. In fact, adding on a rocket engine like that is a pretty common way to improve a gun to turn it into a space gun, though generally with the earlier examples like Star Tram and the like, the payloads are meant to go into orbit rather than just intercepting something in space. It is also possible to just make a gun launched missile that can turn a regular big gun, like those on a battleship, into an anti-satellite weapon. Should this count as a space gun though, since the gun part is just giving a head start to what is basically just a missile? Speaking of, why not just use a rocket? Yes, they're slower than a gun and less immediately impressive, but you can make some fast missiles if you really need to. They also don't have to be launched from the surface. You can have them dropped off by a fighter jet like the ASM-135 from these famous photos. Another alternative is a laser or a particle beam. The former always goes at light speed taking just 1.3 milliseconds to reach up to the ISS from the surface, and the latter can get to good fractions of that speed. This makes aiming an absolute breeze, and of course there's no atmospheric problems, right? Well, not from drag, but the beams would still interact with the particles in the atmosphere, scattering around or even being absorbed. At least with lasers, this can be mitigated by picking a wavelength that zips right through. So space guns are technically very possible, and in fact have already been made, but they still face lots of challenges before we can start blasting invading aliens out of our skies. You can support Space Dock by joining our Patreon, where you can get our frigate, fighter and carrier design reference books, as well as one week early access to upcoming videos. Thanks to our supporters, and thank you for watching.